the English Electric Lightning F6 for X-Plane 11 by Dom Henry. This Cold War Interceptor is capable of Mach 2. Let's jump inside and find out what makes this such a hot rod to fly. The freeware Lightning became available on the xplane.org from Dom Henry in January of 2020. You can see it is very nicely modeled. We're looking here at the metallic livery. You can see the refueling probe, the missiles. We have some nice animations included with the uh, gear on retraction, which we can't see at the moment. We have speed brakes, which extend from the fuselage on both the left and right hand side seen here. The interesting stacked engine configuration is very unusual and unique to the Lightning. And we have an animated canopy, which just looks excellent. Uh, also from this angle, you can see the uh, 60 degree wing sweep is uh, very dramatic on this aircraft. Jumping into the cockpit, we'll find an accurate layout with rather simple textures, but it's, I don't think it's going to bother you at all once you start flying this bird. It's just amazing. The layout though is accurate. If you go Google an image, we've got everything in the right place. It's uh, pretty simplistic with throttles on the left, primary instruments on the front. On the right, we've got nav radios and autopilot and just a few switches to turn things on. Included liveries, the 74th squadron in bare metal, the 5th squadron with the uh, red wing tips here, and the 11th squadron which has the camo. We're going to try and show all of these off, but let's start right now with the uh, red wing tips here. Make sure you check your fuel, you're going to want to run it up to full. The main thing about the Lightning is it burns gas. Uh, we've got our two Rolls-Royce Avon engines. They are stacked, so you can lose one and no asymmetrical thrust. We have two red top air-to-air -air missiles, so if you want to do some of the air combat, you've got that there, as well as some cannons. Here's our power-up, <laughs> easiest one ever. Throw the switches, press the starters. You'll hear the engines engage. And the engine instrumentation is actually right there, so you can watch them spool up. Interestingly enough, I don't think we have a fuel flow meter, but um, it's going to be dramatic on this. Uh, I believe this is probably actually a little more fuel sipping than the real one might be, just anecdotally speaking, because uh, initially the Lightning was designed to only operate at about 150 miles from its airbase. This interceptor was designed to protect the V-bomber, such as the Vulcan, which, hey, it's also available from Dom Henry. Thank you again. He's keeping us in the air with British aircraft. So watching our airspeed, we've got a gear limit right about there, and I just broke it. Uh, I've got that external there. It actually covered. We got a warning. So where I told you the gear limit is, that's where you'll get the uh, gear failure warning. All right, so this is the best time to altitude as per the internet. You want to take off with afterburn, level the aircraft after you've lifted off, clean it up, retracting any flaps or gear. Uh, we'll talk more about the flaps later. That was actually a flaps up takeoff. Uh, every time I've extended the flaps, about the time I can rotate, it's also the same time the flaps are ready to rip off. So after we've leveled and cleaned the aircraft, uh, the internet tells us to accelerate to 430 knots climb at about 450 so you just adjust pitch to hold that you can see i was climbing a lot faster and i've uh, started to lose a little bit of airspeed now and if you watch the angle there what are we at about 30 degrees so around 13,000 feet we should have hit mach 0.87 i believe i was at 0.99 just a moment ago when you get to your flight level of about uh, 360, then you would level off to accelerate supersonic. You can also dive back down a bit to help you accelerating into the supersonic uh, range you want. Again, the max speed should be about Mach 2.0. 
and the Mach speed is relative to the air density at your altitude, so uh, it's not to say that you can do Mach 2 at every altitude. Uh, keep an eye on the airspeed uh, red line there on the left. Uh, you don't have the red line on the top sort of tape one is just showing you where you are at so that does not reflect the uh, never exceed all right so we're going to descend just a little bit you notice it's not much of a nose down angle but we are accelerating a little quicker here now we jumped ahead in the video just because it's not that much fun to watch it slowly accelerate but now we are closer to the max and just for fun i want to do a ballistic climb so we're going to pitch up uh, keep an eye on your G meter just to the left of the airspeed tape and you'll notice once we get to a nice upward angle here we are uh, going ballistic literally so basically we're just going to exchange airspeed and inertia for altitude the downside being near the top of this we will be completely out of airspeed and really not flying anymore In reality I'm sure there is a procedure for how you're supposed to complete the ballistic without losing control. Fortunately, the lightning has been incredibly stable, so uh, if you watch the airspeed now, we're, we're just about out of energy. There we go, the nose is coming down. Fortunately, we have not lost control. It hasn't gotten too squirrely. I'm going to take it pretty easy on it here. As the nose comes down, we're just going to try and keep things stable so we don't completely get out of control and as it dives down you'll pick up some airspeed and recover and so I've kind of cut the video back ahead now we've recovered and we are once again flying all right other features on this aircraft we have two 30 millimeter cannons on the belly so let's try those out we'll go and uh, strafe this industrial complex on the ground it's a neat little effect. If you're into the air combat, you can go and use that against other aircraft. I actually tried to do it with X-Plane, but I've never done it before, and I don't think I did it right. So let's try out the missiles. Unfortunately, we're going to shoot the ground again. It's a nice effect. Uh, they are supposed to be heat sinking, so heat seeking, sorry. If you know how to use the air combat in X-Plane, I assume it can home in on your target and... Uh, blast the tailpipe all right you have a G meter to the left Altimeter of the airspeed setting. tape very important to take note of that uh, I'm just demonstrating over G ing it here and I'm really cranking on it I don't know if you watch the G meter but we hit some insane numbers that uh, even the human body would probably not have been able to tolerate and that obviously crashes the aircraft all right, I'd mentioned earlier the flaps on takeoff. Uh, I have not found in my readings yet if flaps were used on takeoff, but there setting. it is. You notice right at the moment we were rotating, we failed a flap. Now the main problem with this being you have an asymmetrical flap and uh, that's gonna wanna roll you over and you're very vulnerable, you're at a low speed. So it's usually not gonna be a recoverable situation. So uh, the rest of that one crashed. Landing procedures. Here's where you do want the flaps. Get the aircraft slowed down. I believe uh, 280 was where we ripped off the flaps earlier, so get it under nine. 300. Start extending flaps as you approach the field. You can see we're getting nice and slow. We're down about 200 right now. And I found the handling at the speed. You see how we're kind of bouncing left and right? It's just uh, a little interesting to control. Now, the aircraft really wants to move. It's not actually slowing down that Too much. High. There are some aircraft that, when you get to a lower speed and have Unstable. everything Unstable. sticking out in the breeze there with all that drag, uh, it just wants to drop speed and fall from the sky. We're... If you look at the uh, N1, we're not that throttled up, but it's actually just a little bit of throttle. It's not like we're halfway on it. And unfortunately, we've got a bit of float there. I'm pulling it back the rest of the way, just holding the stick, and well, it rather generously called that a landing, but I'm pretty sure if you actually landed uh, with, with the descent rate we just got there, you would have completely destroyed the aircraft. But since we're on the ground, 
kick out the uh, speed brakes entirely, throw the drag chute. All of these early generation fighters, even the American ones, tended to use drag chutes. They just, uh, they were very, very heavy aircraft and uh, you just weren't going to have the braking power you needed. Interestingly enough, to accommodate the, uh, the skinny wings and the way that gear works, you'll notice the uh, main gear, very skinny tires, uh, those were actually inflated to about 330 to 350 PSI just because the whole aircraft weight is on it. It's an interesting little footnote. One other little tidbit from the uh, real world is I shut down engine one upon landing there. I don't know if you saw me hit the fuel. And that is because with both engines idling, the aircraft without braking would accelerate to about 80 uh, miles per hour in the real world. Now I did try that with our Sim 1 here. It did not accelerate itself to 80 at idle, but you can still save a little bit of fuel on the ground taxiing with one engine. So we hope you've enjoyed this first look at Dom Henry's new freeware, English Electric Lightning. I've had a blast flying it. I bet you will too, and the price is certainly right. So once again, thank you to Dom Henry for this excellent contribution to X-Plane. And everybody remember, plan the flight and fly the plan.